Okay. You're in the research center where there are scientists working. Well, that'd be great if a scientist could answer because they would know firsthand. Well, they don't even know what your questions are. Well, I can give them the questions. I have them right here. <laughs> I'm not even sure if we're authorized for somebody to answer your questions. Why is something that's so-called healthy being kept secret? It's not like I'm a terrorist or something. I'm just asking Shira, about milk. Look, you're going to have to send me an email with the information about your documentary, what you're doing this documentary on. I'm asking about the milk protein and how it actually excretes calcium. I'm asking about the proven connection between milk and cancer development, food assistant programs, the lactose intolerance, and also where they get the vitamin D that they add to the milk. So these are factual, nutritional, informational questions, and I just want to know what the USDA has to say about these medical uh, journals. That I don't know. Send me that email, and I'll be happy to talk to you. Have a good day. population moved from farm to city, making it necessary to mass-produce milk. To make American dairy products more acceptable abroad, the USDA established the Dairy Division in 1895. 1919, educational milk campaigns were developed to deal with the surpluses of milk and dairy products from World War I, and as a result of the ongoing milk campaign, substantial increases in milk consumption occurred. take a break, make it milk for vitality. Ridiculous. So it's just not based on, on science. <laughs> Basically, it's not that you're allergic to milk. You're not really getting the true information. In other dairy products, it's a recipe for a heart attack. He couldn't. Uh, there was no way he could. I mean, you always want a constant supply of milk. Would you like to be interviewed for a documentary? It ain't porn or anything, is it? Because you'll have to pay me. <laughs> Where did you get your information from that dairy is healthy? Oh, just in the last couple years from the TV. So no, I have not looked into it. I've just kind of taken their word for it. They're not going to say, well, I shouldn't say they're not going to say something on TV that's not true. The medical specialist stated, it is my opinion that the ears, nose, throat, and accessory organs of all participating subjects examined by me were not adversely affected in the six months period by smoking the cigarettes provided. Remember this report and buy Chesterfields, regular or king size. But they wouldn't say that milk is good for you if it really wasn't. And again, that's what we feed our babies. Calciumi, that used to be the TV commercial in England. Milk is calciumi. Well, I once heard an interesting theory about how apparently that whole food pyramid that was introduced in uh, lots of schools around the world in the, uh, what was it? I don't know if I'm right with the time, but the 40s or 50s, that actually was given and put together and budgeted by the milk and meat association. Don't just take my word, learn to research it on your own. 
Because if you learn how to research it on your own, then it means you've made a step outside of the box and you are taking your health and your life in control. Why is it good? Well, uh, it's good for the bones, teeth, everything. Great food. Strong bones, and what's that, what's that commercial about uh, milk? milk? Yeah, I mean, what is that? Milk? Got milk? It's called the dairy industry. <laughs> <laughs> they have a very large lobby. <laughs> they spend a lot of money. Why do we believe that milk is good for us, though? Because uh, it's commercial. One more time. Schools. Yeah. schools. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. taught by little kids, little kids yeah. 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 that it's good for us. Right. Without proof, kids accept what their parents say, what their doctors say, and you know, they usually don't question it. My grandmother, who was a nurse, took me to Mayo Clinic to try and figure out what was wrong. And they did all these tests and said, you know, we can't find anything wrong. <clears throat> Take her to a psychiatrist, which they did not do, thank goodness. But I went all that time. And one of the main things that was giving me a hard time was the dairy. And it just happened my dad was a milk processor. My name's John McDougall. I'm a board-certified internist. That means I'm a medical doctor that takes care of adults primarily. And I'm the luckiest doctor in the world because uh, my patients get well. Looking at the meat and the dairy group, of those two groups, what should I give up? The question is, you should give up the dairy group. You'll get much better results than giving up the meat group. And the reason is, is uh, dairy is basically liquid meat. It has essentially the same macronutrient properties, the same amount of fat, cholesterol, uh, protein, lack of fiber, and so on. They're very similar in their nutritional makeup, but dairy has some extra problems, you know, allergy problems, uh, autoimmune diseases that they cause. If I now drank milk or had a product with any kind of dairy product, tomorrow morning I would wake up with swelling and a great deal of pain. It causes an autoimmune response in me that makes me ache all over. I get like an arthritic reaction where my joints start aching and so if I have dairy over two or three day period, you know, a little lasagna here or a little vegetarian pizza there or just various things like that, I begin to feel like I'm going to become totally crippled. They think dairy is health food. They look at a block of cheese and they think strong bones. They don't think glob of fat. So psychologically they eat dairy guiltlessly and they eat large amounts without any reservation. So if I was going to give one powerful message to a patient, to a community, to a country, to a world, is get off the dairy. You'll improve your health more than getting off the meat. The way it manifested in me was that my face was constantly broken out. Said he didn't know whether going on a non-dairy diet would cure the migraines, but it certainly ought to be worth the effort. And I never had another migraine. This kind of, of deception is not like damaging your TV or your car. I mean, these are your children. These are your husbands and wives and your mothers and fathers that are being hurt by this dishonesty. That's the problem. They should be ashamed of themselves. Now, from what we're learning, it's sort of ironic. It does keep grown-ups from growing old in a very special way. <laughs> it gives them coronary artery disease. Milk creates an inordinate amount of phlegm. I have not had one sip of milk for 20 years. And I had a pretty juicy nose when I drank milk. I didn't connect the two. I haven't broken any bones for years. When they say milk has calcium, everybody needs calcium, they, they leave the, the consumer to make the connection that therefore milk is a good source of calcium, which is of course absolutely not true. The, uh, the fact that the anim animal proteins are highly represented in, in, in uh, dairy products will cause calcium, negative calcium balances for people and it will actually be the cause of osteoporosis and things of that nature. So, the, uh, but these are things that people don't understand. So the, are, it's a very, very clever way. Uh, you, you need fat, you need protein, you need carbohydrate, you need calcium. Yes, there are things in milk that you need, but you don't need milk to get them. 
Do you drink milk? I actually love milk. You do? I love milk, absolutely. I've always loved milk all my life. Land on the facts, heart disease, obesity, type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, infection, and so on. I think there are federal laws that protect consumers from false advertising. Oh, I'd like that. <laughs> that would be great, right? This is the Wild West. The dairy industry can do whatever they want. They got the money, they've got the political control, there's nobody out there to put them in line, and so that's what they do. From 1988 to 1993, there were over 2,700 articles dealing with milk recorded in the medicine archives. None of the 2,700 researchers spoke of milk as an excellent food, as we have been told by the dairy industry. Instead, intestinal bleeding, bovine leukemia AIDS-like virus, asthma, childhood diabetes, heart disease, anemia, arthritis, allergic reactions, and cancer were the focus. If all this is really true, why haven't we heard about it? That's it. This is like the best That's place for breakfast. He's all boarded up, Check is he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see people. Would you say it's difficult to eat absolutely non-dairy? Especially at a restaurant. It's crazy. Because butter is one of the main things that they use for oil. Out here, what is what and whose is who? It's a poached egg. That's a poached egg? Uh huh. Okay, and that's her bagel. Uh -huh. Oh. I hate to say, it looks like they put some sort of butter or something on it. Let me see. Because uh -huh. of the yellow. Might be just in the pan, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. butter on it. I did, I did say, right? I did uh -huh. say. I thought you were going to eat healthy. Say, hey, you're going to try and eat yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a lot of milk. <laughs> Build strong bones, right? <laughs> they have a poacher, it's like a pan. Right. And if they don't put the butter, it sticks to the poacher. So even though you said no butter, they, they don't listen to it? They don't listen. Mm. It's not safe to go out and eat. Oh. Really, if you're really deathly allergic to something, it's not safe. A lot of times it'll say in the menu, no cheese, they'll put cheese in it. If you're dairy allergic, what do you do? You've already taken a bite. And what about I try to get this across to them, and they, they're like, I've been doing this for 25 years, and you know, well, so have I, but right. people get sick. I have a mother that has asthma, so that's how I know a lot about what gluten's and the dairy and all that, because it affects her breathing. from? Well, uh, Golden Valley. And what do you do? Nothing. I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that milk is good for you? I don't know. I just always told it was. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think it's healthy? Well, because you've been told that all your life, you know. Everybody tells you it's healthy. I mean, they used to believe that the earth was flat, and everybody believed that. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly someone, some crazy person came out and said, uh, no, uh, you know, the world is round. So if everybody believes that milk is healthy for you, 
But if one person came and told you, uh-uh. Well, that's their opinion. So you find it natural that a human drinks milk after its infancy? Yeah, it's probably better that they have their mother's milk, but cow's milk is all right, I guess. <laughs> I'm Trooper, and I'm from the Grand, uh, Williams, Arizona, and I robbed the Grand Canyon Railway. Do you think milk is healthy for you? Yeah, especially when you're a little one. When you're a little kid? Yeah, the little whippersnappers need milk. What is it that's in milk that you think is healthy? Calcium. Calcium. For bones and teeth. Yeah. Where else can you get calcium? Calcium? Yeah, apart from milk. Um, you can take supplements, supplemental calcium. Probably meat. Any meat you eat probably has calcium in it. Anything with blood in it has calcium, right? Yeah, that works. <laughs> the bloody things have calcium. Drink blood, not milk. <laughs> I think the cows that the milk comes from are pumped full of steroids and hormones and everything else, and it's in our in our milk, in our meat, and the foods we eat, and all that, that you know, and we're ingesting it. It's no, it's not good for you, cool. but it's good. I mean, it sure goes good with chocolate cake, right? Well, growing up in school, you know, in grammar school, we were exposed to cow's milk as being a source of calcium and nutrition. So the food pyramid is is wrong. I know that now. The ADA food pyramid, I don't agree with. And Do you know who made that pyramid? Yeah. The, the companies that produce the products that they mention yeah. on the pyramid. Do you get the feeling you're being screwed? And USDA, their principal interest is protecting the livelihood of the livestock and dairy industry in this country. They also are the ones who then take this report and put out a very practical message for the public called Dietary Guidelines for Americans. They're telling Americans what to eat based supposedly on health, but they also have a mandate in law that they must promote American agricultural products, even the ones that are unhealthy for you. They say let the market run the show and let the people go to hell. Conflicts of interest statements are important, very important, almost sacred. And that's supposed to be open to the American public. And it's just readily available so that everything's transparent. That's, that's the story. Well, Dr. Bernard's organization went to the USA and said, We'd like to see the conflicts of interest statements on these 11 people who are on that panel. Because he knew, and I knew, and some others knew, that there were biases there. And we wanted to see how well it was stated on their, on their personal conflicts of interest statements. The USDA would not give them those conflicts of interest statements, even though it's a law that is supposed to be transparent. They had to go to court to get the court to force the USDA to let them see the conflicts of interest statements. Why do these corporations always get their way? Whatever they have planned, we never get a say. The Department of Agriculture and the people that they had appointed to this committee had industry ties. Out of 11 people on the committee to decide what Americans are supposed to eat, six of the 11 had financial relationships with either the dairy industry, the meat industry, or the egg industry. We're cutting services to keep their profits maximized. Now children starve while billionaires get subsidized. Considering, as they made up the guidelines, was not accessible by the public, and that it was done in violation of federal law. Hey, 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 young. Hey, I, oh, hey, the 
introduction of uh, dairy products, the introduction of milk, um, it, it's, it's forced upon indigenous communities. My body system is not used to cow milk, and there's a reaction that ends up happening in my body where a tremendous amount of bloating happens, and it really has impact on my system. The, the mothers that are breastfeeding, um, right before that they, you know, within four weeks of, of, of delivering a child, then they will be enrolled in what they call a voucher program. And that voucher program is WIC. And uh, the theory behind that is, is to make sure that the mother has enough nourishment through the dairy products. Food assistance programs, unfortunately, have been used not for the health of the people who are, who are there to benefit, but they're used as a dumping ground, a dumping ground for agricultural commodities. Dairy prices are low, the government buys them up, they put them in prisons, they put them in schools, they go into other food assistance programs. There's a lot of families that are on the Women, Infant, Children program. And I myself was also a participant of that program when my children were young babies. If you look at the Native Americans, they have this enormous prevalence of obesity, an enormous prevalence of diabetes, which is taking an, an incredible toll on that population. And what are the foods that they're given to, to eat? Not traditional beans and corn and grains. That, 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 would, be, that would be normal and that would be healthy. No, it's milk. It's cheese. It's high fat, high sugar, high calorie things that are making them sick. With that voucher that they gave you, uh huh, did they allow you to buy vegetables and fruit? I mean, just basic foods that you cook and that are nourishable? No, uh, they just let us buy like um, cheese and then eggs. They have a lot of control on how things end up happening. And I really firmly believe that the Dairy Council has a significant amount of influence even on the educational system. Kids go to school, you know, the local people who are running the program, they're the ones, the teachers and stuff, they, they put, start putting pressure on the local kids because they believe that, oh, dairy's really good, you better, you better drink your milk. When my daughter was in school, in the cafeteria that she ate in, all the adults would end up telling them, you must drink all your milk, and you cannot end up leaving a cafeteria. Organizations that actually allow this dairy, the, the school lunch program to exist, and the WIC program, and food sold in, in, and made available in hospitals, I might add. Those, three big, those are three big programs, big federal programs. Those programs are offering food that are nothing more than the garbage from the dairy and livestock industry. They're subsidized. If a school wants to have access to the school lunch program, and they almost all do, they have to agree to offer the dairy option. That's disgusting. That's been existing for a long time. It should stop yesterday. She tried to tell many adults, I don't drink milk. I'm not used to milk. They would force her to end up finishing, you know, her milk carton. And she would be very, very upset over that. And she would be telling me when she got home, she says, Mom, they forced me, you know, to drink this milk. National Dairy Council is obviously interested in selling milk. So, so even for individuals who complain of indigestion or other, other stomach cramps, other pr stomach problems, the Dairy Council wants them to keep trying to drink milk. And they do drink the milk, and then they go to class after they've had their milk at breakfast and had their milk at lunch. They're not feeling good. They're going to be squirmy in their chairs. They're not going to be able to concentrate. They're not going to do as well in school. So in a way, it's like we're setting our kids up, those children who don't tolerate milk well, to do poorly in school. I see some children that, that um, are saying that they have a stomach ache. They don't, they, don't have, they don't want to take the milk. Or some of them will say that it's hurting their stomach. When you think about it, these programs are quite racially biased because so many, so many young children and so many individuals in America are actually lactose intolerant. And, you know, they're interested in health just as much as, as the next person who isn't lactose intolerant. You know, they go in, you know, to end up telling a lot of our, you know, our young children that, you know, you have to drink milk, and the big logo that is out there has got milk with people, you know, with milk on top of their lips. Oh, 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 oh,
wa away ya away ya nga hey na ya What is lactose? Um, I don't know. I know lactose intolerant is when you can't drink milk, but I don't know what lactose is. Lactose? Uh, sounds like it might be lack of milk. <laughs> lactose. Lactose, I'm assuming it's something that's in milk. <laughs> it's, it's something that, that burns right here. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I know I'm lactose intolerant. When I drink milk, I take off like a rocket. What did you say? It messes with my sinuses. I get, I'm allergic to it or something as I get older. The tolerance is putting up with her. Yeah, it but lactose, I don't know what that is. Lactose is a sugar. It's milk sugar. It's glucose attached to galactose. It's what we call a disaccharide. And when you're a little baby who's nursing, you have an enzyme that breaks those apart and you can absorb them. But after the age of weaning, normally you lose that enzyme. We don't have the uh, enzyme to digest milk past the age of two, um, unless you were born in the United States, uh, maybe after two generations. A genetic mutation that's carried by about 85% of Caucasians has allowed them to digest this milk into adulthood, which is not the case for other races and certainly not the case for other species. Lactose intolerance is totally normal. It's a sign that you ought to get weaned. All I knew was what my mama told me. She just said it was good for you, you need to drink. Said it make your bones strong and all that. I don't know. That's what I would like to find out, because I just thought about it. Why do it make me go to the bathroom? When you consume a sugar, which is the lactose, that the bowel cannot digest because it doesn't have the lactase enzyme, what happens is that sugar goes through your small intestine where it's supposed to be digested, ends up in the large intestine where bacteria digest it. They produce gases, which give you gas and cramps, and just the sugar being in the bowel causes uh, you to get diarrhea because of water that's drawn into the bowel. It's good, but it sends me straight to the bathroom. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so you straight to the bathroom. That's what I like cleans me. Don't get me wrong. We we're the only species after winning we tend to want to keep on drinking milk for the rest of our lives in many cases. And what do we do? We go get it from another animal. Why don't we drink dog milk? My Mm -mm. Isn't it cool? Yeah. Can you describe to me what you see when you, when you picture a dairy farm? Obviously not the slaughterhouses and things like that that you don't want to picture. You picture kind of the nice rolling green hills and the little red barn in the hills and yeah. How does a cow give us milk constantly? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I just know that it comes in cartons. Okay, what are we betting? Is there anything that we can eat inside? Yeah, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try this out. Okay, flour, thyme, milk. You know, all the toppings right there. No dairy products on them. I won the bet. I've never liked milk. Ever. <laughs> Dairy cows, as opposed to beef cows, the job of a beef cow is to produce calves that go to the, that become steak on your plate. The job of a dairy cow is to produce milk so that you can have milk, ice cream, cheese, yogurt, all the good stuff. Man, you're educating me. What are you talking about? How you, how do cows give milk constantly like that? Eating. Hey, corn, different stuff. When you have a baby, don't your titties swell up? It ain't gonna swell up, but you don't wanna eat the, the right stuff. Wait a minute, naturally, Wait, don't nothing. you? What are you supposed to say? Not titties, what you supposed to say? Breath. Uh, Breath. Whatever. 
Briskets. For what they Some briskets. I gotta go back to work. Don't they swell up? Don't you suppose, that's what she's supposed to do, right? In order for a cow to give milk, she has to give birth to a baby calf. And that starts the lactation process. Calf goes and lives in its own little house. Okay. And basically that is to prevent disease. If the calf stays with the mama, it can be contaminated with some of the manure or anything and can get Yoni's disease or can get other um, bacteria or, you know, just be exposed. So you want the calf to be in a clean, clean environment. And, and the mama can't stay with the calf because she's got the milk. She's got all this milk she has to give. What happens to the milk from the sick cow? Those, we, we actually, what we do, we pasteurize that and feed that to, to the babies. A cow can have an infection in her udder, which is called mastitis. So the somatic cell count relates to the incidence of mastitis. So if the cow has a low somatic cell count, and somatic cells normally occur in the milk, White blood cells are everywhere, right? Um, and so they're in the bloodstream, they come into the milk, and they exist. White blood cells are pus cells. And in analyses of the dairy that's being sold, you know, they have 350, 400,000 pus cells per cc, along with 25,000 bacteria per cc, as found in regular milk that you buy in the stores. White blood cells are present just naturally to help the baby cow, but but humans, you know, when they're consuming is consuming cow's milk, that's really not a concern. And what it ends up really being is just um, basically pus that is that is present in the milk. Um, it doesn't really help our immune systems. It's meant for a baby cow's immune system. So that's just something else that we don't need. Milk is really a byproduct of blood. Okay. I don't want to freak you out or say something bad, but where does milk come from? The cows, you know, it's a normal process that the cow secretes the oxytocin and then the blood. Business. Born and raised in the dairy business. In our area, the Greater Southwest Milk Marketing Agency, uh, we're almost totally BST free. I just never use it. And, you know, one of our concerns is too is the organic situation going on. You know, I'll put my milk up against any organic. But the thing of it is, it came from BST, which is just. A st Cost me money, of course, to use it, right? It makes your cows sicker and stuff. You know, you have more problems. You have more, you know, ailments on your cows because you're pushing them so hard. And the consumer doesn't like it. You know, you can say it's already in milk, and you can tell them the consumer tell you blue in the face. But when you have a syringe there, <laughs> it look it's good. a drug. Exactly.
Anytime you add hormones to something that's going to be consumed by humans, you're going to affect them in some way. If you give them hormones to produce more and more milk, their udders can get distended, they get mastitis, which is then treated with drugs. R. Taylor, FDA's deputy commissioner who, in addition, wrote the no-labeling RBGH guidelines, was previously employed by the Monsanto Corporation as their attorney. So let's recap. Cows that are injected with RBGH have higher levels of IGF-1, which is associated with cancer. The use of the hormone also increases infections in the cow, which are treated with antibiotics and are found in the milk. FDA seems to be convinced that RBGH is okie dokie and bans labeling milk RBGH free. So you will never know. We are committed to having cheap food in this country. We in America want cheap food. We have a cheap food philosophy. We cannot change our price or get more for our milk to cover our costs. So right now, this past year, there's a lot of guys losing equity and guys that are just not making it, even with large dairies. We're required to pay 15 cents a hundredweight into a dairy checkoff program for dairy uh, promotion, dairy research. You're talking 15 cents on all the milk in the United States of America? Just figure out what that exact figure is and then multiply it. It comes to like, what, 200 million, something like that? A year. The margins get smaller and smaller and smaller every year, so to uh, make a profit that would sustain a, a lifestyle of this is what I want to do, uh, you have to milk a few more cows. Like any other industry, they have to meet, they, they impact the environment, like the air, like the water and the soil, for example. From here to the groundwater, we're almost 300 feet deep. So, uh, but that's one of our constant issues is to make sure we don't uh, do anything to, to pollute, to contaminate the groundwater or surface water. In the past two years, I spent like $300,000 on environmental improvements. When we talk about global warming, we tend to talk a lot about CO2. But there is a gas that is far more dangerous. It's methane. The cattle industry is contributing, you know, a gas that has 23 times the power to create a greenhouse effect that does the CO2 from cars. Dairy industry, on one side, it's, it's a big economic generator. Animal agriculture has grown enormously. People consume five times as much animal products today as they did 50 years ago. Our consumption will double again in the next 50 years. Already the atmosphere we're breathing has more than twice as much methane as it did 
uh, a century ago. Just imagine how bad they'll be if we don't start doing something about it. Pollen decontamination to the air, the air pollution. The one animal that's the most powerful emitter of methane are dairy cows. They need to eat an enormous amount of food to produce all that milk. According to the UN, it's a bigger source than all the cars and trucks and planes and trains put together. 70% of formerly forested Amazon is now being used for pasture land, and more is being used to raise crops to feed the animals. So this is one of the biggest sources of deforestation in the world. We have been going to the Caribbean, to Central America, Southeast Asia, and places like that, to cut down forest, not just to get the wood, but to create pasture land for cattle. You know, the big industry corporate types, they're going there, well, you want this, they'll kind of set it all up. You know, take down the forest, set it off to the lumber, make some money there, you know, get all this ranch land, grow the cattle there. They actually chase off the peasants who had the land before. They go up in the mountains, they get bitter, they're destitute, and the first thing you know, they're now getting organized and they create political violence. They become the guerrillas of that country. Abducted. It's a stupid poster that somebody made up. It wasn't real. No. no. Cal, are you filming though? Yeah. Are you? I'm gonna slap the tar out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Which one of my cars? Not your driver's license, except heck, you're younger than I am, so I might take it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still filming, and you really are gonna get slapped. <laughs> We're allowed to go in. Them alien chicks was built to please. That's why we smell of cows. We just came from a dairy farm. <laughs> Do you drink milk? If I could drink it, it would be great. But I don't drink much of it. We went juke joint jumping on planet Mars. Well, I don't do slaps. I've never, slap. I've never slapped anybody in my life. I just threaten a lot. Really? Mm -hmm. You never slap your kids? Oh, dang, I forgot about that. Yeah. Crazy little thing called the Krypton Kick. Man, I saw them all over the place. Cowgirls from outer space. Well, I guess they must have taken me to every honky tonk in the galaxy. Uh, mustache commercials, they say that milk is good for your bones and makes you grow healthier and stuff like that. So that's why. So that's why. That's yeah, why you think it's good think for your bones. And plus, they eat cheese, like the sticks of cheese. I buy them sticks of cheese, the string cheese. Cheese is seventy to eighty percent of calories from fat, most of which is saturated. People don't realize that. They think, oh, this is a health food. It's rich in calcium, but it's not a health food. It's terrible for you. We have a program here for children, a WIC, and they they make sure you have to have milk. They and then when they get older, like my little girl, they, she's off of powder and now she's on regular whole milk, and now they tell me she's too fat and then I gotta give her less milk, and it's low fat milk, because I, she's too chunky, but she's a normal child, you know? The dairy industry is very powerful. They have tons of money, and they have very successful ad campaigns. This can have painful consequences. That's why strong bones are so important around here. Especially for those who are just arriving. The proteins and calcium in milk make your bones stronger and healthier. They're a they're a giant, and so they have they have an easy time of getting getting their message out. Um, whereas the individuals who who really understand the research and understand that dairy products are risky, unhealthy, and definitely unnecessary, they don't have the financial backing for the most part, and don't they aren't able to get out the word. Why do we drink 
No. To make our bones stronger um, and the calcium. Calcium? Yeah, shiny teeth. Good for your bones. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got calcium and, and other vitamins and minerals in it that, that uh, help with the whole body. Calcium is important. We need calcium, right? Dairy's got the most calcium in food, almost. Therefore, we need dairy. That's the simple-minded conclusion. I just think it's an important ingredient in our diets. You know, the higher the dairy consumption in different countries, the higher is the risk for osteoporosis. It's not the other way around. Like the dairy industry, I mean, they've been getting away with that yarn for quite a number of years now. And they found that the countries where they were consuming the most milk, the countries where they're consuming the most calcium, had the highest hip fracture rates. It's actually opposite of what you would think. At Harvard, the Nurses' Health Study tracked women, more than 70,000 women, for over 18 years. What they found is those who drank the most milk had absolutely no protection against hip fractures at all. The idea that calcium is going to build strong bones is a myth. Over and over and over again, they do these studies, they put more calcium in the system, and it doesn't help the bones. And if, we, and, if, and if we learned about nutrition, what were the factors that caused us to lose calcium, and what foods we could eat to have calcium from a healthier source, people would be much better off and their bones would be much stronger too. When you consume animal protein, such as found in dairy products or meats or, or eggs, you pull calcium from your bones and excrete it in your urine. It's the protein in our dairy-based foods that makes it more difficult for us to keep the calcium that we're getting from dairy products in our bodies. What happens is when you're consuming the animal protein, your blood becomes acidic and your body reacts by pulling calcium from the bones as, as a kind of buffer to, to neutralize the blood. I uh, had 14 or 15 kidney stone attacks and which uh, so it will uh, convince you not to drink as much milk as you'd like to drink. Changes take place throughout the body, including the kidneys. And as a result, they lose that uh, bone mass, that bone material into the kidney system, which precipitates kidney stones, and you will have an overall effect of essentially urinating your bones in the toilet. But all they, they still say is good for your bones and teeth. I don't know what good for, you know, what, what are they talking about? Why do we get oh, this information? Probably because uh, there's just great ad campaigns by milk producers. Where, would it, where else would it come from? Well, I happen to know that milk helps build strong bones. So drink up. Well, Mr. Miller told me he never drinks milk. Look at him. Yeah. Hi, kid. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> When you feed cow's milk earlier, six months, eight months, ten months, even twelve months, you're taking a chance the child's going to lose iron from, from occult gastrointestinal bleeding. And because milk doesn't contain iron as much and it's not as absorbable as it is from breast milk now, they're going to be, the potential is going to be there for iron deficiency when they're young. And iron deficiency in a young child can have effects on reducing their intelligence. And that reduction in intelligence can be there permanently for the rest of their life. So, so in this home daycare, um, mm -hmm. do you give the kids milk? Uh huh. I have to give them milk at least two to three times a day. You have to? I have to. It's because of the food program that I'm on. Jen says they put a stick of butter in everything. <laughs> Here in Louisiana? Yeah. No way. Yes. Yeah, Seriously. that's what yes. they're famous for. Where for? For. All right, let me find something for you, okay? Oh, great. If we can be by the window as well, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you have to wait, no? Yeah, I put this uh, on, the, on the potato. Let's see, fried food, fried food, and some fried food. Y'all know, buy the film of the stuff. Of course, <laughs> why not? Love it. What whoop it goes real quick, them cheesy potatoes and eggs. <laughs> In the year 2000, the Department of Agriculture pulled together for the dairy industry a program designed to trigger cheese craving. Cheese and butter. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, I do. It's now 30 pounds per person per year, thanks to government programs. You don't actually need any other explanation for why Americans are so fat these days. Well, they get you get your strong bones. I didn't tell me, so that's what I've been doing. Yes, it is. It's very good for you. What does milk do for the body? It does the body good, just like the commercial says. Yeah, yeah. I've got a poster in my bedroom of a Three Stooges with Curly, with milk over his lip, and right after Mo hit him with a bar, and the bar is all bent over his head. And uh, it says underneath, milk makes strong bones. And I agree with that 100%. Now, the dairy industry has grown become very rich. The last time I looked, they had something like $165 million just to advertise their product. That's a lot of money. TV. That's where we get all our good information, right? TV. Why can't we use soy milk with it? Well, it, it would be just as good, but, you know, uh, corp the corporation won't allow it. The last time I looked was now, maybe 15 or 20 years ago, they had 300 dairy offices around the United States. 300 offices. You know, they're out there doing their thing. They are so powerful. They are so powerful. Milk. What can we tell you about milk? Down here, milk is a commodity that no one lives without. Milk is a staple. Everybody in the South drinks milk. 
Who tells us that milk is healthy? TV, basically. FDA? Yeah, but we get it all from TV. I mean, I've read a few articles, but how many people read articles on milk? You know, like I said, they, they come with the thing, you know, the, the white thing, the big advertisement, milk is good, and just because they say it on TV, most people believe it's true. Well, one thing I have to say for American industry is we're really good at using our byproducts. We make butter, and what do you have left over after you make butter? Well, you have skim milk. You sell as much skim milk as you can, and you have something else left over. So then you dry it down, and you have these leftovers. And so if they can create a market for the leftovers, then they make more money. Anytime you have milk derivatives in a food product, you are making that food product dependent on the dairy industry. It's capitalism. It's a smart idea. I mean, they're doing, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, but what is the, the health impact of that? That's a whole nother question. That's what America's all about. It's not if it's healthy for you, it's not if it's good for you, it's how, I, how can I market this and how can I get you to spend your money. That's what America's about. Go gas station where there's a whole hell of a lot of possums. If you love your baby, best treat her nice and kind. Say you love your baby, best treat her nice and kind. Uh, milk, it does a body good. <laughs> I don't know. I really I don't know. Um, I think it would be cool for everybody to go and uh, at least once try the milk and a cow. The real deal. Man, that is so cool. And then I think it's just a different, 
people kind of see where it comes from. You know, they they probably would respect a farmer more. I like it just straight out the cow, man. Yeah. Because it's it's just more pure that way, I guess. Now that's a whole different process because normally you just go to the store and get it out of a jug for five dollars a gallon. But the farmers are actually the ones that's getting it. They're selling a hundred pounds for like thirteen dollars, and people normally don't know where it comes from. Clay Logan, possum capital of the world. Just in case you wanted to know that. The dropping of the ball in New York. Only we lower the possum in Bryce Town. You know, our, our dairy farms went from, I believe, like 25 to zero. We have zero dairy farms in Clay County now. And I just had a, a five bypass heart attack a month ago, you know. Uh, uh, I had five bypasses done and I had eight blockages. And, and uh, I'd say it was my lifestyle of eating that, that that in hereditary, you know, part of it's hereditary, but uh, it's uh, what, what you eat. One of the main factors is, has, is a high diet, high in animal products, especially animal products that are high in saturated fat. And as I said earlier, that the biggest contributor of saturated fat in the American dietary landscape is dairy products, cheese and butter. Dairy products are a rich source of cholesterol and saturated fat, which are the two things you want to avoid if you are at risk for heart disease, or even if you even if you want to prevent heart disease altogether. If you look at what's in milk and other dairy products, it's a recipe for a heart attack. It's got an awful lot of fat in it, mostly saturated fat, the kind that raises cholesterol. So if there was one food to wipe out to prevent heart disease, that would be cheese and butter. But when you have heart disease, You'd be crazy to eat, uh, to eat pouring cheese and butter on your foods. But, you know, go to a hospital and see what they feed them. See what they feed people coming out of bypass surgery. See what they bring to you when you're in, when you're in a hospital. They bring you all kinds of high saturated fat dairy products. Uh, probably not milk. <laughs> Everything told me was a lie. We worked on this uh, a total of about 27 years, you know, and we did many, many experiments, dozens of experiments over the years, and we asked all kinds of questions. First off, is it really true that animal protein, in this case, cow's milk protein, is, that it can, can increase cancer? Well, we established that point in spades. It was absolutely true. It was dramatic. And then we went to some other questions, like, for example, how does it work? You know, I'd like to know those kind of things to get more confidence and the more we looked at a very fundamental level, biochemical level, we could find out this was changed, this was changed, this was changed. A whole lot of things was just sort of going wrong to create this cancer phenomenon. And then we got to a point where we could actually turn on and turn off cancer development just by giving them cow's milk protein or taking it away. That was dramatic. Insulin-like growth factor, which is a hormone that mama cow puts in the milk for baby cow to grow um, and human mothers do the same thing for in, in human breast milk. Because milk is designed to make things grow and so the mother cow is putting growth factors and hormones and nutrients into the milk to cause changes in the calf's body that make the calves cells grow. When you're an adult you don't need any more growth hormone. Growth hormone basically is looking around for something to do. If it finds a non-self cell or a, a mutated cell, then it can act on the, um, those cancerous cells and, and increase growth of, growth of cancer cells. Because when we're done growing, we don't need we don't need to grow anymore. And so, but our bodies our bodies still think that something needs to grow. All of a sudden, here's cow's milk protein, the most sacred of all nutrients, I think, as we've been as we've been educated. It causes cancer. It's ridiculous. And the information we got on cow's milk protein would make it the most relevant, significant chemical carcinogen we consume. Now, the question is, you know, why doesn't the public get to know this? We know that um, milk is 
associated with increased risk of prostate cancer. We know that milk is associated with increased risk of ovarian cancer. We know that milk is associated with higher levels of IGF-1, which increases your risk of breast cancer. We know all these things, but the public doesn't get that information. Who controls what the government promotes is all based on social and political concerns and economic concerns. It's not based on, on science. Now they say that milk helps you lose weight. <laughs> really? Hmm. Well, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't, you know, chug two gallons of milk in the morning and, you know, expect to, to lose weight anytime soon. Then uh, I think that's, it's easy to believe what you see if you don't know any better. Let's just, let's just think about that for a minute. Milk helps you lose weight. Okay, you take this, we'll talk about the data, but just let's just think about that for a second. You take this food, we'll call it a food, that is designed for, by mammalian mothers for their babies to take a tiny, to help a tiny mammal grow into a much larger mammal. This is a food that's designed to make people or people, other mammals, get bigger. It's, it's hard to, to think that this is anything other than nonsense. And yet it sparked in, an enormous multi-million dollar ad campaign to try to get people to buy milk. Research papers and the scientific journals that show that their top scientists realize this is fraud. Point, there's been about 50 randomized controlled trials that have looked at the effect of either dairy or calcium on weight loss. 45 of those 50 studies have shown no effect of um, dairy or calcium on weight loss. Um, two have shown weight gain and three have shown weight loss. The three that showed weight loss, all by this guy, this one guy who's been funded by the dairy industry. His name is Michael Zemmel, he's in Tennessee. And other researchers have put this theory to the very same test. And they haven't been able to find the same result. They find that, that if anything, milk doesn't do anything or it might actually cause you to gain more weight. My stepdaughter, she actually had asthma real bad. She was hospitalized for three weeks out in Philadelphia. And uh, the doctors couldn't figure it out. She still has asthma, but we went to one doctor and they actually said, stay away from all milk and dairy products. We know that, you know, if you do the right kind of diet, you can actually probably save at least 80% of all the illness in this country, serious illness and otherwise. I happen to believe it's more closer to 90 to 95%. You can actually cure a disease this way. It's a huge effect. But are we addressing it as a society? No, not at all. Well, they diagnosed me as having bronchitis, asthmatic bronchitis. And so I was on Theophylline, and then they developed the time-release Theodore, and I'd be on toxic levels of, like, it's either four or 600 milligrams four times a day, which is the most that you can take. And yet my blood level would not be at the amount that they wanted, and they kept blaming it on me. You know, it's your problem, it's your fault. But we give them a diabetic medication, we give them a high blood pressure lowering drug, we give them a cholesterol lowering drug. We've given them permission to continue to eat the same diet style that caused the problem to begin with. So the, the inevitable consequence is the disease, the underlying disease, has to get worse as they continue to follow the same diet that caused the problem to begin with. We're selling them out. We didn't give them the possibility, we didn't give them the knowledge where they now have the possibility to reverse their diseases and live longer and save their life. That's malpractice. I mean, when you're looking at doctors, it just, that's a tough one. I mean, they're supposed to know because they go to med school. You know, at the most, 
they might get one course. I mean, for undergraduates, we, we, that's just ridiculous. We're not adequately informing the people what they can do. We're just giving them a drug. And getting yourself in such a mess that now is really driving the whole health care cost problem. And I met some people that knew about food allergies and about milk and, and other things that were bad for you. So I stopped drinking milk and some other things and cleaned up my diet and did a lot of different things for several years. And I didn't have any more problems. I didn't have to take any medication. This professor comes along, starts talking about nutrition. Now my, my favorite nutritionist is Jane Brody. Jane Brody's not a nutritionist. She's a writer for the New York Times. She had a book. She's a graduate of Cornell. I know her. This guy doesn't have a clue. He's in here. He couldn't believe it. He said he has 140 people sitting around him. He said, now, here's 140 of my colleagues going out to be doctors. And that's what they get for nutrition. Pathetic. everybody get the information that milk is really good for us? Mom. <laughs> we don't ask mom where she got that from. She got it from them. They know. <laughs> what is this? Home movies? Well, something like that. Yeah. We're doing a documentary about milk. Milk? It does about yes. good. Milk? Yeah. I see. Do you drink milk? Yes. Why do you drink milk? Because it's chocolate. I don't drink chocolate milk. Only chocolate milk? That's right, from, from brown cows. How do they always give us milk? Well, they, they eat grass. I'm Isabel Maples. I um, am a registered dietitian. I studied at Chapel Hill and for undergraduate um, I have a master's in sports nutrition. It's a package of nine different nutrients that Americans need, um, adults and kids, for um, growth and development and good health. Oh, definitely. I mean, besides milk, there's also dairy foods like cheese and yogurt. Well, and again, that's old advice. Um, traditionally, when somebody had heart disease, they, um, particularly if they had high cholesterol, they followed a low-fat, low-cholesterol diet. And dairy foods might be one of the things they mistakenly uh, avoid in their diets. And typically, their animal foods would have cholesterol in them. Plant foods don't have any cholesterol in them. And they tend to be, um, not always, but they tend to be higher fat foods that would have cholesterol in them. So, butter, cheese, sour cream, milk. You can have dairy products if you have heart disease or, or if you have a tendency to it? Oh, definitely. Any hormones that uh, a cow uses are not active in a, in a human body. That's like the same way your key to your house doesn't unlock the key to your car. I mean, it's not the key to your car. Girls are more likely to be living with people, with other men, like stepfathers, that are not biological. Um, relatives and that has to do with pheromones that maybe they go into puberty early um, because of pheromones. Because um, they're, they're staying with someone that's not their dad? Mm -hmm. um, sexual images that girls are exposed to. They make more sense than um, the possibility that, um, that, that milk is an issue. 
There are traces of antibiotics in milk. I would, I would say no. Um, I, I, there might, there, I would say what, basically, I've worked with African Americans an awful lot, and that tends to be one of the groups that often is lactose intolerant and, and, and may be afraid to consume more dairy because of lactose intolerance. Or, and just because their grandmother did too. I mean, part of it's just the cultural thing. But in, in terms of who needs dairy. Why do it make me go to the bathroom? African Americans really, really need the nutrients that, that dairy provides. Maybe we should give them other choices apart from milk because it causes discomfort. It causes, and maybe that could be a problem for them to concentrate at school. Um, yeah, well, the concentration, I guess, I guess I can see. I was going to say I've never heard, heard that, that comment, but I, okay, I can see that. Um, I, again, I mean, I think that nutritionally what they're going to get from, from milk is different than what they get from soy beverages. Um, yeah, I have to look that up. Uh, you know what? I have to look that up to see, to see what the difference is. Question. And how you get into the, this building? Um, the other lady, because we went to the other building, uh -huh. and then they sent us over here, and she opened us up and to to talk. I mean, I'm just looking for someone. I have just nutritional questions. Yeah. And I was told when I called up that you can just come into the research center. Yeah. That is just fine. I was just a one, you know, kind of wondering who you talk to with, and then usually we not let the uh, other people in. You know. Oh, okay. 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 That is just fine. You know. Is there someone here that uh, can meet with me? If not now, then maybe. Uh, tonight or tomorrow no, morning? Actually, um step at a time, don't be living on the line. I don't need a friend, I got more than on the line. Sunshine in my brain, making everyone complain. Radio in the heart, don't be being so strange. Take a little hand, baby, where have you been? Everybody says that you're moving again. Okay, well, they don't even know what your questions are. Well, I can give him the questions. I have them right here. <laughs> I'm not even sure if we're authorized for somebody to answer your questions. 
Look, you're going to have to send me an email with the information about your documentary, what you're doing this documentary on, and what questions you want to get answered. And it, it can take days. So we're not going to get you something for tomorrow. It's too complicated. I'm just asking Shira, about milk. give me your full name and your phone number, and I'll give you my email address, and you can send me an email, and we can go from there. But to go on like this, there's no point. I can't talk to you over there unless I know what the questions are, and I need to know what your background is on this. I'm asking about the milk protein and how it actually excretes calcium. I'm asking about the proven connection between milk and cancer development, food assistant programs, and lactose intolerance, and also where they get the vitamin D that they add to the milk. So these are factual, nutritional, informational questions that have aroused from medical journals that I've read. And have you tried to speak to the people who wrote these medical journals? Yes, yes, I have, but they're not connected to the USDA, and I just want to know what the USDA has to say about these medical journals that came well, out. And they're not going to be able impossible. to talk to you over there, so you have to be able to accept that for today. So my question is, if somebody has a question about nutrition, where should they go? There are all kinds of different sources of information about nutrition on the Internet and different places. So, so you're just going to have to accept that. Send me that email, and I'll be happy to talk to you. Have a good day. for you because it helps you look better too. Your complexion looks better. It puts calcium into your bones so it becomes stronger. And you grow mentally and get, it helps you at school. It makes you grow faster. It's it seems like they're pretty, the milk company's pretty desperate. So I don't see Get Broccoli posters up here. What happens to people that don't drink milk? Um, they stay short. I think the, the ads in the cafeteria is, you know, the smartest form of advertising ever. I think that, um, that, you know, if you're trying to get people to buy milk, to drink milk, that, you know, you put it in the schools, and, um, you know, the kids see it, and then, you know, when they're adults, you know, they're hearing all the time, it's milk is healthy, milk makes you grow, milk makes your bones strong, so of course, you know, they're gonna be giving, feeding it to their kids, and, and I, I, I don't know if anybody really knows, you know, when they're drinking it, what it does. Why does the public get to know this? the got milk cacophony. <laughs> You're not really getting the true information. Every scientist knows about it. The dairy industry knows about you it. You know, there's two careers for a dairy animal. I mean, this stuff is dirty. We um, are very conservative in terms of science. So it's not based on, on science. They get the, uh, most of the vitamin D you make, I think, is made from lanolin, which comes from the wool of sheep. So they make it from, they don't kill the sheep to get the lanolin, they just shave its wool off and they squeeze the lanolin out of the sheep wool and then they add it to the milk. You're looking like, like you're stunned. You didn't know that? I am cow, hear me moo. I weigh twice as much as you. And I look good on the barbecue. Yogurt, curd, cream, cheese, and butters made from liquid from my udders. I am cow. I am cow, hear me moo. I am cow, eating grass, methane gas comes out my ass.